Hey, good morning, Facebook world. Just some quick thoughts for your weekend. I want to ask you um, today, were you scared or at least intimidated the first time you stepped foot in a church building? Or maybe um, were a little bit taken aback and scared about the process of attending a, a church event of some kind. I think most of us probably were. In fact, I bet like most of us, you maybe had thoughts in your minds like, in your mind like, you know, I'm not going to fit in there, or I'm not like these people, or, or I have too many sins, or, or these church folks, they seem to have it all figured out, but, but my life seems to be falling apart. But what happens? You, you go attend a church event. You get to know the people that go to church, and you begin to realize that, hey, these are imperfect people just like me. These are people that have messy lives. These are people that don't have everything figured out just yet. These are just people that have placed their trust in Jesus and they're trying their best to serve him. You know, I guarantee it if you attended one of our church services at the West Visalia Church of Christ, you would probably find people who've been attending church their entire life and others who are there for the first time. You might see a person get up um, and say a prayer or read a scripture and you might think, wow, you know, there's a person who has it all figured out. Look at how good of a Christian they are. But you know what? What you're seeing right there at that moment in their life is just a short snippet of their entire life. You don't know what they're struggling with right now, or you don't know the crazy things in their past that they've worked to overcome. You know, I've heard people say before, I'd love to start going to church, but, but I, I won't fit in because of all the things that are wrong in my life. But the fact is, you are the exact type of person who best fits in. A person who admits that they're not perfect. A person that admits that they need Christians. Or that they need Jesus and what Christians have to offer, actually. But understand that when you see a group of Christians that, that look like they have it all figured out, first off, they don't. And second, you don't know the past that they're working to overcome. And there's a section of scripture I want to share with you today, and then I'll, we'll, we'll stop. But in Acts chapter 2, you have some people that look like they're super Christians. In fact, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 044, it says, And all those who had believed sold all their possessions and were sharing with all as anyone might have need. So you look at these people here, and you think, wait a second, these believers are so generous that they're selling their items and they're, and they're giving to the poor. You think, well, that's not me. I'm not that good. And then you keep reading. And it says, and day by day, they're continuing with one mind in the temple. So they're getting together with other Christians daily. And it's hard for us to go to church, you know, once a week. And you think, wow, these guys have it all figured out. And then you read in verse 47, it says, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day, those who were being saved. You look at those people and you think, wow, I'll never be as good as they are. They give their, their possessions away, they're worshiping God daily, they're assembling with the church daily, they're so much better than me, there's no way I'll ever be like them. But again, all we're seeing right there in those four chapters in Acts chapter 2 is just a brief snippet of a bigger picture. If you just looked at that one section of scripture, you would think these are people that have it all figured out. But you know what? These are imperfect people with a really big past that they're working to overcome. In fact, if you back up just a few verses in that same chapter, you find out that these people that seem like super Christians are actually some of the same people who crucified Jesus. Let's lay that out again. These church folk that look like they got it all figured out are the same people that were yelling, crucify him, crucify him, and put Jesus on the cross. But yet they overcame their past and became some pretty awesome Christians after that. In fact, Earlier in the same chapter, Peter is preaching to them and he tells them that, you know, you're guilty of killing the Son of God. They realized what they had done. And in verse 37, it says that they were cut to the heart by the message. And they asked Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren, what shall we do? And Peter tells them, he says, repent and let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those people that in, we read about that seemed to have their lives all figured out, those people that were giving to the poor, the people that were worshiping daily, those are the same people who were guilty of killing Jesus. But what happened? They realized that they were wrong. They realized they needed to make changes. They asked the right questions. They received the right answers. And they were converted to Christ and their life was different after that. Now those same Christians struggle with sin, I'm sure, after their conversion. But a change took place. They had a past, but now they have a different future. When you see people that it looks like their lives are all figured out, 
understand that every single one of us is working to overcome a past. And even now, we're working to overcome sins in our present life. Don't be intimidated by a church service. Don't be intimidated by being around people that seem to have it all figured out because no one really does. All of us are working to overcome sins right now and all of us are working to overcome the sins in our past. I thank you for tuning in today. Have a wonderful and blessed day.